Hi, my name is Mark and I'm doing a job review on New York Life, Northwestern Mutual, Omaha Mutual, and Mass Mutual. I've worked for one of these companies as an insurance salesman and financial representative for a couple years. Uh, they all work very similarly. I've had a lot of friends in the industry move around and they all say that the companies have the same business structure and very similar pay scales. So I'm going to do a little review here and uh, kind of help people out who maybe are getting a job offer or have gotten the job offer and are deciding whether or not to take it. So I've been at my company for two years and a lot of people might say that that's not very long but actually that's way above average for this industry. Uh, I joined, you know, back when I joined I took a boot camp to train me with about 30 other people and I'm the only person in my company that's left from that boot camp. So that kind of shows you a little bit about how above average I am right now in my company as far as staying the length, staying for the term. Then, uh, you know, I, of course, right before that I did my interview process and my interview process I think was a three-step process with uh, after I submitted my application and that was done online and it was for a position for for a financial advisor actually and a lot of these companies will do that they'll have applic they'll have job positions open for a financial advisor even though you're not going to be a financial advisor for probably two or three years just because you don't have the experience and you don't have the tests done and a lot of these companies actually have restrictions on how fast you can take those tests and become a full-fledged financial advisor. Uh, but they get a lot more applications and if they say financial advisor than if they do if they say insurance salesman. Nobody's going to apply to a job that says insurance salesman. So just, I guess, be aware of that. Uh, I will say that these companies are not multi-level marketing companies. Though there are a lot of companies out there that are multi-level marketing companies in the insurance industry. And if you see one of these multi-level marketing companies, just run as fast as you can in the other direction. The main difference is recruiting. Uh, in my company, it's my manager's job to do the recruiting and he has to you know, build up his team and keep that team at a certain level or else, you know, his paycheck decreases. My job is to sell life insurance and other financial, excuse me, other financial products. In a multi-level marketing insurance company, they tell you to sell the insurance, but every time, every person that they talk to, they're also trying to get them to join the company and sell for them because you get a lot more money for building up that team than you do for selling the actual product. It's it's pretty close to a pyramid scheme. Just don't get involved. If you have experience in the multi-level marketing companies, you'll, you'll agree that people just don't make money in that business structure. Then as far as pay structure goes, most of the companies that I'm reviewing today use the 50% of annual salary structure. So it changes a little bit based on the type of insurance that you're selling, but essentially it's going to be very similar. If I sell a policy that is $1,000 a year for my client, my struck, my Pay, my commission is going to be $500, 50% of what he's paying per year. So if it was $1,000 a month that he was paying, then that's $12,000 a year, and I'm getting $600. And that's the kind of policy that they're going to show you during the interview. They're going to show you the commission scale 
for a $1,000 a month policy. Unfortunately, those policies are very rare. You're not going to find those every day. What you're going to find most of the time is the kind of policies that pay, you know, 50 to to $100 a month. And, you know, $50 a month is six to $600 a year, and that's $300 in commission. But it's still a fair amount of work to find that policy and then do all the paperwork, and wait for your client to go through medical exams, all of that. So, you know, it gets a little frustrating when you're only getting $300 before taxes at the end of the day. Now, I mentioned the turnover rate. Uh, I would prob- I would say that it's probably about 95% of people make it to the end of their second year, and that's probably being generous. So why do people fail? Well, there's a lot of reasons, but I'd say one of the big ones is that people just don't manage their own time well. In this job, you're not going to be hanging out at the office and doing work like you would at a regular job. They actually tell you not to be in the office. They just tell you, you know, go off on your own, sell insurance. If you sell insurance, we'll give you a paycheck. If not, then you don't get a paycheck. And a lot of people have a hard time with that. Um... It's the kind of thing, it's kind of throwing you to the wolves in in a way, so it's not totally their fault, but when you, people will often sell a policy to their family, sell some to their friends, but after that, they don't know what to do. They're not comfortable going up to random houses and knocking on the door, and they're not comfortable going into businesses and knocking on the businesses and asking to sell insurance to those people. So there's only so much you can do, and oftentimes those people will fail out pretty fast rather than try to expand their comfort zone, essentially. Uh, But there are a lot of people that succeed, and actually one thing that kind of bothers me with the industry is that there's always going to be that top guy in your office and they're going to tell you all the time like, oh, look at Chuck. Chuck is just this great guy. Chuck is making $100,000 this month. Why can't you be like Chuck? You know, if Chuck can do it, why can't you do it? And that's not what you want to hear when you're making $80 in a month and, you know, you still have your bills to pay. Like, yeah, but they seem to think that, like everyone in this industry seems to think that you can be motivated by telling you that, you know, oh, Chuck is like Chuck is this great guy who's making hundreds of thousands of dollars and he can do it so you can definitely do it too. Uh but there are a lot of people that succeed in the industry. So why do they succeed? A lot of them come into the business with a good client list. Uh they know a lot of wealthy individuals. We had a couple people in our office that came from banking, and so they knew they had a whole list printed out of people who were high net worth individuals, and they sold some annuities and life insurance to those people, and they started making bank. A big thing is to be good at making relationships. So if you sell some life insurance or another financial product to someone, you have to keep that relationship up so that that person will start referring you and they say, you know, oh, I remember Mark. Mark was a really good guy and uh, I'm going to refer him to all of my friends. That's how you start, you know, really building up your business. And I'll talk a little bit about the industry. Uh, I came from a very different industry, actually. I was a massage therapist before I got into finance and This is the most cutthroat industry I've ever been part of or uh, or even seen in real life. Uh, It was hard for me to adjust. There are people who are just the worst people that you'll ever meet. And they do quite well because they know how to work the system. They know how to take advantage of the new people, how to do very little work and still take 70% of your of um of your commissions 
and they get away with it time and time again. I'm sure that people in real estate and other really high commission jobs will say the same thing, but you know, I don't have experience in those jobs. So, you know, be aware of that and uh it's yeah, it's it's just different when you have to watch your back constantly. Um so I won't tell you to take the job or not take the job if that is your option right now. Some people do really well in this career and some people it's just a waste of time. And that's kind of up to you. If you have any questions, you can definitely message me and I'll try to get back to you. Uh, you know, I'm ha always happy to help, but in the meantime, you know, good luck with the job hunt. I know it's always difficult finding a job, but I would say don't take this job just because you can't find another job because you don't want to throw away six months or a year of your working life just because you had nothing else to do. Uh, this isn't a job that is going to give you a paycheck to keep you going because it's not. It only gives you a paycheck if you're doing work, uh, if you're really getting out there and doing the hard work and and selling the insurance. And so if you're not doing that, then, you know, go work anywhere else that is not 100% commission. Yeah, so I hope this helps. Um, and yeah, shoot me a message if you need anything.